Hey everybody, it's Jason from the Texas Gun Vault, and once again, it is Sunday, and that means it's time for the Texas Gun Vault poll question of the week. A weekly vlog that I put out where I talk about items in the gun culture, gun news, politics, or current events that I want to get your thoughts and opinions on. This week's question deals with what motivates you to buy the guns you like and the guns that you shoot. So as I said, this week's question deals with your motivation in the type of guns you buy and what you look for when you buy them. I can tell you as a content creator, I get a little bit different perspective. A lot of people will say one thing and do another. And you're saying, how do I get that perspective as a content creator? Well, you have to understand that every time I make a video, I can see all of the analytics on it. I can see the interest. What drives traffic to my channel and more specifically, what videos are a vast majority of people interested in. And then of course, I get the comments. You probably comment, but you don't read everyone else's comment. I do, I get to see them all. And from what they say about certain guns or certain topics, gives me a lot of insight into their thinking. And sometimes what people say is not what they do. So, with that preference in mind, let's dive right into this week's question. This week's question deals with what aspects of a firearm you consider to be the most important when buying one. While all things are taken into consideration, which for you do you often find is the deciding factor or the most important? So when taking a look at this question, I hope you guys keyed into the fact that I said all things are important. Often when I ask these questions, people think I'm asking them strictly from a black and white perspective, saying, well, you only look at build quality, you only look at brand. No, 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 all those things are important. But what is truly the deciding or the driving factor in your gun buying purchase? It's really surprising to me that people answered the way that they did this week. Because I can tell you from my perspective, I'm actually gonna call BS on this. It's one of those things where I think people say one thing and do another, but it's not necessarily because they actually think that they're hypocritical, they are just completely unaware of it. As I said, I have a very unique perspective as being a content creator. I can see the analytics, I can see what people are interested in, I can see what their thoughts and opinions are as they comment on my various Ranger Report videos or videos about specific guns. But let's see what you guys had to say. With over 1,000 votes this week, we have Price, I'm a penny pincher, or I want to flex on the pores, 8%. Quality, nothing else matters, only how well it is built, 75%. Brand, I like one brand and will always gravitate towards it, 4%. Coolness, new factor. I like the new guns and the coolest fads, 5%. And something else completely, explain in the comments. So as you guys can see, the overwhelming majority of people said quality. And as I mentioned before, I'm calling BS on this. I know a lot of people in their minds think quality is the most important thing when it comes to their gun buying decision. After all, they buy a gun. They want to know it's the most reliable. It's the best built. And then they go online to find reviews of it. And then maybe they find someone, like yours truly, that has some negative things to say about it. Not that I necessarily trash the gun, but now they have to defend their choice. But I can tell you, Quality is not the driving factor. If you look at my analytics or you go to other YouTube channels that do gun reviews and have shot and reviewed a large number of firearms, you can easily see which videos get the most. And I can tell you which ones those are. They are going to be the most affordable and the cheapest firearms. I know what some of you guys are saying. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I subscribe to the Texas Gun Vault to see all of the cool BNT and HK guns or maybe his clone videos on like the Mark 18s. I get that. I know there's definitely some people that come here specifically for those niche videos. But you look at the overwhelming views that I get, man, they are going to be for the cheapest guns. Now, it is important to say that cheap does not mean unreliable. It does not mean that it's a piece of junk, and it does not mean that it is poor quality. 
But I can tell you, you look at Mr. Guns and Gear, you look at Hickok 45's analytics, the cheapest guns, the kel the Taurus, the Rugers, the entry-level guns get the most views. Now, why is that? If people truly cared about quality, why don't I get more hits on my HK or B&T videos? I mean, arguably, those are some of the best guns on the market. But why when I make a video about a Ruger LCP, do I get more views in one week on that video than my B&T videos get, let's say, in a month? Well, maybe it's because a lot of people own that gun. But why do so many people own that gun or are looking at that gun? I argue it's because of price. Now, I'm not saying that you guys are a bunch of cheapskates. In fact, there's a lot of people that I know personally that follow this channel that are the exact opposite. They wouldn't touch a kel or a Taurus if it was given to them and it was gold-plated. They're only gonna buy a B&T or an HK, and they're gonna buy five or six of them, especially if they're in sequential serial number order. I know that they will drop more money on guns than I will in an entire decade, but they'll do it in one month. And that's just the way it is. It's not that they're necessarily wanting to flex on the pores, but it's just that, well, they've worked hard for their money and they wanna buy the best. They wanna buy what nobody else has. So price is a consideration. They want the most expensive gun, probably because it's the most expensive and they're gonna be the only one at the range that has one. So I see both ends of the spectrum on this. And I'm going to tell you that the results of this poll are people wanting to respond the way that they want to and not the way that they actually think. So let's break each one of these down as I said. Price, penny pincher, and I wanna flex on the pores. So when it comes to price, that's what I think it is. I think this truly is the deciding factor. There is nothing else. Now, I'm not saying that everyone falls into that category. And sometimes your financial situation dictates the types of guns that you want to buy. Maybe you can only afford a High Point. Maybe you can only afford a kel -Tec. You can't afford an HK. You can't afford a CZ. Maybe you can't even afford a Glock but you're looking for a high quality gun. Well, that price is still the biggest deciding factor. Many people will come to me and say, hey, I want to buy an M4. I want some type of AR-15 rifle. I want it to do this. It needs to have this feature. What do you recommend? Okay, well, you have quite a demanding list of what you want the gun to do. All right, well, then you probably want a Daniel Defense. If you don't want to spend exorbitant amounts of money, well, go buy a Daniel Defense. Well, how much is that? Well, you're looking at about fifteen to $1,800 to get everything you want on it. Oh, um, I, I'm only wanting to spend $400. Well, we have an issue because you're not gonna get a quality M4 with all the features you want for $400. Now, there are $400 AR-15s out there and a lot of them work really well, but the price is what the deciding factor is. Then we have quality, nothing else matters, only how well it is built. I think for the vast majority of people that are not gun collectors, gun nerds like myself, this could be truly the very important feature of the gun. If you're only gonna buy one gun, of course, you're going to want it to be quality. And maybe you're thinking, okay, I'm willing to spend the two or three extra hundred dollars to buy the top quality gun at the time versus the cheapest one that's in the store. But as I said, I think a lot of people are lying here. I know people that absolutely love kel -Tec. They love Taurus. Everything Ruger comes out with, especially on the more budget-friendly side, they go out and buy. They would rather have five or six Tauruses, or is that Tauri? Is that the plural of Taurus? I have no idea. But they will go out and buy five or six of those every time a new kel -Tec comes out. And I'm like, well, why don't you just not buy those three kel and actually invest it in a nice Glock or a CZ or an HK or a Beretta or a Colt? Nope, they gotta have every single kel -Tec. And that is perfectly fine. You guys know that I am a libertarian. And I think the coolest thing about the Second Amendment is that we can all do this our own way. And sometimes our styles will be compatible.
You guys know I'm a collector. You guys know I like higher end guns, but I also own and appreciate the more budget friendly options. There's nothing wrong with that. I think as long as you're into the second amendment, as long as you like guns, we're brothers or brothers and sisters in arms in this battle. I don't care if you collect kel and you think they are the greatest thing since sliced bread, and I think they're absolute pieces of junk. We can agree to disagree and still be friends, right? But as a content creator, as I said, I get to see a side of the gun community and the gun culture you guys don't. When I come out with a range report, for example, I recently did a review on the Ruger LCP. I said this is a really good quality gun. It's just not for me. And man, oh man, did I get the hate. In fact, I got a whole bunch of thumbs down on it. People saying that my review is biased or I don't know what I'm talking about. I need to go out and get training. This is the greatest carry gun of all time. Why? Why did they say that? I think it's because they bought it and they're looking for confirmation, but that's okay. But this is one of the things about the gun culture that can be very toxic. For example, as I said, you guys know what brands I don't like. I don't want to buy a Springfield Armory for political reasons. But if you like Springfield Armory, I don't think you're a bad person. I go, well, does that gun make you happy? Well, great. Are you going to go out and shoot it and enjoy it? Great. I'm not going to buy it, but I'm glad that you did. I'm glad that it brings happiness and joy to you. And you are in this fight to preserve the Second Amendment with me. I like to think that we should be positive and we should support people that might not have the same views as us or people that are interested in a different aspect of gun culture than we are. We are all in this together. Then we have brand. I like one brand and will always gravitate towards it. Now, to be very honest with you, this is the one that I probably would have voted for. I like certain brands. I'm not just into it for one brand but I have certain brands that I like. And when it comes to collecting, it's kind of like Pokemon. You gotta collect them all, right? So even if it's a gun that I might not be 100% interested in, I'm like, well, I have every other barrel length, I have every other caliber, I have every other size. Ah, oh, now they came out with this option. Well, I gotta get it. You guys know what brands I like. I'm a big fan of Colt, big fan of HK, big fan of BNT, big fan of Beretta. Now I'm a big fan of CZ. I gotta get all those guns. But this is the one I would have voted for just because I have a little bit of brand snobbery. Then we have coolness, new factor. I like the new guns and the coolest fads. This only got 5% and this really surprised me because once again, I get to see all of the analytics. When I make a video, even over on the Texas Gun Vault 2, my little behind the scenes channel that only gets like 150 views per video. Well, if I make a video about the latest gun coming out, like the Springfield Armory SA-35, the Browning High Power Clone, and I'm just going, huh, I wonder if it's worth it. And I'm just really talking to my biggest fans that subscribe over there. My gosh, I get thousands and thousands of views on my little behind the scenes channel because I'm talking about the latest, greatest and coolest thing. I really think that price and coolness are the two driving factors. And for people to only vote for this for 5%, Kind of surprised me. And then we have something else completely explained in the comments. And when I went through the comments, it appeared that most of the people that I think would have voted for this would have said caliber is a consideration. Maybe I should have put that instead, but I like to give other people options. Maybe they don't think price, quality, brand, coolness, or even caliber are the deciding factors, or maybe it's a mix, but that's what I put down there. And most people said caliber, which I completely understand, especially in times when we have ammo shortages. So that's my thoughts on all this. So let's see what you guys have to say with this week's top rated comments. And with the top rated comment for this week, we have the reindeer, the rabbit, the bat. And I believe he gets the top rated comment for a number of weeks in a row. And he says, when buying a firearm, my decision is usually a 50-50 based on both practicality and or fun. Aside from the hand-me-downs with sentimental value, they've got to either serve a role a lot like a tool or just be a fun gun. Although some will definitely check both boxes. I do find older firearms to be more fun though. Well, see for him, the practicality aspect of a gun is really important. I know that many people will criticize me and my gun collecting saying guns are just tools. 
And I agree with that. There are guns that I look at as tools. The guns that I carry for personal protection are used to defend the home. Well, those are definitely tools. Well, then there's other guns that I go, this gun is just absolutely cool for whatever reason. It could be a mechanical reason, it could be a historical reason, or it could be a sentimental reason. I'm not going to carry those. I'm not going to defend the house with those. I might not even shoot them because I'm a geeky gun collector. And sometimes I'm going to buy a gun for that cool factor. And that's just the deciding factor for me. I got to have it because it is neat. It is different or it just fits some role in my collection. I actually think that looking at guns simply as tools does them a misservice. And here's why. Because the Second Amendment is political. Whether we want it to be or not, it's obvious to us that the Second Amendment is a God-given natural right. But for other people, it's not. And if you look at a gun as just a tool and not a symbol of your freedom, well, what's going to happen when you abuse that tool? I know tools here in my garage, let's say a shovel, a screwdriver, I will work those and use them constantly until they break. Why? Because I know I can go down to the store and simply buy a new one. I don't have to worry about bans or runs on these things or background checks or any obstacle for me to obtaining a new shovel. But when it comes to firearms, well, yeah, I actually do worry about that. It keeps me up at night sometimes. So that's why I say looking at a gun simply as a tool isn't always the best idea. For me, it's a symbol. It's a symbol of freedom. Then we have Cameron Fitzgerald who says, like you said, all factors must be considered, but quality and reliability has to be most important for a carry firearm. If it's only for range use, it really doesn't matter. So he has kind of a wide swath of opinions here, and he's kind of like me. I do agree. If I'm going to carry a gun, I want to make sure it is one that I know is reliable. I have guns and have done range reports on guns that I have mentioned. Well, it's a cool gun. It didn't run reliably for me. I definitely want one, but I wouldn't carry it because I can't trust it. So I think this was more geared towards people that may just buy one gun or two gun and not necessarily be a geek like myself. But as my collection's gotten bigger, my buying habits have changed. And that's why I say maybe for me, I'm a little bit more of a brand snob. Then we have 19 millimeter who said, the last few guns I have bought have been influenced by ammunition availability. Lately, I have purchased weapons that use NATO calibers, mostly because those calibers seem to be on the shelf more often. And this is that comment that I mentioned. I think he probably would have voted for something else explained in the comments. And caliber really is a big consideration. I know SIG has come out with a brand new MCX. I believe it's called the Spear. And one of my friends and subscribers here was able to pick up one of the first 50 of them. But it's chambered in some weird caliber. I think it's like 277 SIG or something. I don't know what it is. I haven't even investigated it yet. Well, getting ammo for that's going to be kind of hard right now. And what if that caliber really doesn't take off? And in 10 years, nobody makes that caliber. But the gun is cool as heck. So for me, caliber might be a consideration in me not buying that until I know this is actually going to be something that's going to take off. Then we have Skeleton Slayer who says, quality is the big one, but also style. I tend to like older guns, especially when it comes to pistols. That's just what I like. And once again, I think this is someone that may have voted for the last option of something else explained in the comments. Style is a huge important factor, but style is qualitative. The guns that I think are stylish might be the guns that you think are ugly and boring. That's just the way it goes. A good example would be the SIG P365. I think that is the most boring blocky gun on the market. And other people say, I really like the aesthetics of it. And that's totally cool. But style for me is important. It's something I probably should have added to the questions. And then finally, we have Jerry Holmes who says, build quality doesn't have to be top of the line. Good barrel, bolt carrier group, etc. Something I feel I can trust for the long haul, accessories too. All right, so he says it doesn't have to be top of the line. It just has to be good. And I can tell you that's something else that I noticed online. So for example, people especially that like AKs, they will get on my AK reviews or another gun reviewer's AK review and go, well, it doesn't have the best trunning. It's not the top of the line, blah, 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 blah. 
And it's just like, well, I get it, but this actually is a pretty darn good AK. It has a forged trunnion. It has all the accessories that you possibly could want. Okay, maybe it isn't a $3,000 arsenal or maybe a rifle dynamics AK. I get that. But for $1,200, it's pretty darn good. And most likely, it's going to outlast you. Yeah, it's nice to say, I have the absolute best. This AK has been run over with a tank, and it still runs. Well, are you really going to have your AK run over with a tank? Yeah, probably not. So that one that's just good is going to suit you just fine. So there you go. That is the Texas Gun Vault poll question of the week, where I am calling BS on all of you that said quality is the most important, because I honestly believe it should have been reversed with price. I know price is the deciding factor, and you can tell me it's not, but trust me, I know it is. Go look at my analytics, and I know the people that buy guns. I can see what they're interested in on both ends of the spectrum. Price is the deciding factor. Don't lie to me. I know everything. I've told you that in the past. I tell my kids that. I tell my wife that. I know everything. And I know for you guys, price is what's important. So there you go. As I said, the Texas Gun Vault poll question of the week. If you would like to participate in next week's poll, please go to the community tab of my YouTube channel. I will link to it there. Please go vote comment and like other people's comments so we can get the top rated comment of the week. I'm curious to think if you guys think I got it wrong and I shouldn't call you guys out when I know you guys are lying to me. But let me know in the comments section below. And as always, thanks for watching.